There is no shortage of dog chewed furniture. So in this video, we cover how to fix that. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back. This is a set of end tables I found on Facebook Marketplace. You can see there is a dog chewed corner here, scratches all over. There is a crack in one of the tops, but I think overall the set still has pretty good bones, so I'm going to give it a whole new look. Dixie Belle was kind enough to send me some free products, so I picked out a stencil, some decoupage paper, top coat, different colors of paint, some gilding wax, and boss primer. They did send me the tropical transfer as a little extra present, which I thought was super nice, but I'm going to use the majority of these products on this flip. I had some of Dixie Belle's White Lightning in stock, so I mixed that with some warm water in my spray bottle and got right to cleaning these pieces. I spray a good amount of cleaner on the surface, scrub them with an old kitchen sponge, wipe away the excess material. After cleaning, I do come back with a damp lint-free cloth and give them a nice rinse. Now to fix the dog chewed corner of the table, I used my hot glue gun and applied a liberal amount of hot glue to a good corner that was not chewed up to make a mold for my Bondo so I can repair that chewed up corner. While doing the dry fit of the mold, I noticed one side wasn't quite long enough for the damaged area, but I still made this mold work. I filled it with Bondo and then applied Bondo directly to the table where I knew the mold wouldn't fit and touch, but still needed some repair. I put the mold into place and then use masking tape to hold it while the Bondo dries. While I had the Bondo out and some mixed up, I did go ahead and fill in this big crack in the table and any other major cracks and dings I came across. When the Bondo is dry, I simply peel the mold off. Now it looks a little crazy and icky, but it just, this Bondo mold trick is a cheap way to do the repair and kind of get it in the basic idea and shape that you need for the repair. And then you come back with some 120 grit sandpaper and either sand by hand or sander more into shape. And a repair this large normally will take more than one Bondo application. So I applied the Bondo, let it dry, sanded it, and then applied a second coat to fill in and shape even more to get the desired look to make it look like there was no longer any dog chewed corners. I sanded all the Bondo areas flush or into the shape that I desired and then also went along and scuffed sand the entire surface of both end tables to get them ready for primer. My surf prep sander sucks up the majority of my sanding dust because I have it attached to my shop vac, but there is always a little bit left on the surface. So I wipe away any remaining dust residue with a damp lint-free cloth.
Now these tables are already dark and if you notice from my paint color selection, I have picked dark colors of paints, but I do go ahead and prime this piece with boss in gray because I do intend on selling this set after I am done and you never know how people are going to treat furniture after you get it in their hands. So typically on pieces that I am going to sell, I prime no matter what. I only applied one coat of the primer and it does say on the directions to let your primer dry for at least 24 hours. I was really drawn to the mood and colors of this floral ballerina decoupage paper. I like how they go together but yet are very different from each other as well. So I start by separating the two prints and then trimming them to where they will fit going across each tabletop. So you can see that the decoupage paper ends about two thirds of the way across the top of the tables. So to help hide or make that transition more smoothly or not as noticeable, I wet my fingers with some water and I go along the edge of the paper. Once the paper is wet, I come back with my fingers again and pull off little pieces to feather the edges of the decoupage paper. Doing this will help camouflage the line of where your decoupage paper ends and you won't be able to notice it as much in the finished top. To apply the papers to the top, I am using Dixie Belle's clear coat in a satin finish. I work in sections and apply a thin layer of the clear coat down. And then I place the decoupage paper on top of that area that I just applied the top coat. To smooth out any air bubbles or wrinkles, I use some plastic so you can use some saran wrap. This is an old Walmart bag that I have. Once I have the entire decoupage paper down attached and it's smoothed out of any air bubbles and wrinkles, I come back with a second layer of that top coat. And then I let all of that dry before I move on to the next step. While I wait for the decoupage papers to dry, I grab this Victorian Damask stencil. It is the perfect size to fit on the bottom shelves of the tables. Movement and stencils do not go well together. You will end up with a runny, blobby mess. So in order to avoid that, I either stick my stencils down with some adhesive spray or in this case, I am using some painter's tape to hold them into place. 
In order to fill the stencil and add some texture to the bottom shelf, I am using Dixie Belle's Dixie Mud in the color black. When you first open the container, you will have to mix the product together. And then I just use my stir stick to lay some of it down on the stencil and then come back with a spatula and I smooth and spread that mud out into a very thin layer. After the stencil is completely filled, I do go back over it one last time to scrape away any excess mud so I can put that back into the container for later use. You let your stencil set for about five minutes and then you can pull it up to reveal your beautiful textured stencil pattern. Now the mud is a product that hardens, so you do not want to rinse this down your drain. So when I am finished with my stencil work, I always take my stencil out into the yard or driveway and spray it off with my water hose. I was so excited to get to the paint process, I forgot to hit record, so let me catch you up. I am using Dixie Bell's Mineral Chalk Paint in the color Caviar. I am using a stipple or dab 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 motion to apply a layer of the caviar only to add some texture. Now, as soon as I picked these tables up from the Facebook Marketplace listing and I saw the current condition of the tops, I knew that I would not get a very smooth look to it. So I have planned this whole time to do a textured surface. I looked at the ballerina decoupage paper and then the flower one and looked at the colors and decided I'd like the fade in transition from the ballerina one better. So that is the look that I'm carrying throughout both end tables. I repeat this process over and over, switching back and forth between my hands. It was exhausting, but the end look ends up being exactly what I wanted. So it was definitely worth this process. Now after that first layer of caviar is dry, I grab the gravel road and also the color chocolate along with that original caviar that I did the first layer with. Now you can see where I went around the flowers and in between the flowers with the caviar and I want a more faded look this time. So I miss the surface with some water to give myself more time to work with the three different colors. And I start by adding that gravel road around the flowers and a little bit in between them. And like I did with the first coat of paint, I am using that stipple dab, dab, dab motion to add even more texture. This is going to help hide the previous damage from the wear, the years and wear and tear of use, and also help hide that transition line from where the decoupage paper stops about two thirds of the way. I also want to note that I use the same brush through all the colors that I'm using. 
and that I often mist my brush as well. So I don't get a thick layer. This is a pretty thin layer of paint because it's pretty watered down between the mist on the surface and the misting of the brush. I go back around the edge of the gray and add a little bit of the brown. And then I come back in with that caviar and start tapping all over to give it more of a blended kind of marble effect look. And you can see how tapping over all the gray and brown area that I did really made those colors come together. And then what really seals the deal and makes the final effect look that I like is taking a damp shop cloth and then dabbing it all over to blend it even more. Now I repeated this process over the entire surfaces of both end tables. It was a little time consuming, but I just put on one of my favorite shows and then just created a way in the workshop. It was fabulous. To protect my paint job, I am using that clear coat in the satin finish. I apply a thin coat and let that dry and then come back in and add a second coat. When you are applying this thin coat over dark colors like the black, it does look milky at first, but don't be alarmed. Whenever it dries, it does dry crystal clear. I let everything set overnight before going on to the next step. I had this art brush company reach out to me and asked if they sent me some brushes if I would do a review. So I am trying out these brushes for the first time. First, the case that it comes in is really nice and it comes with 15 different sizes and types of brushes to use. Appearance wise, I really do like the sleek look of the shiny iridescent color of paint on the handles. I also like the color combination for the bristles and how soft the tips actually are. This set includes a wide variety of sizes in the brush tips, so there is something for any paint project you may have. When inspected closely, you can see that there is good quality in the brushes. And also whenever you pull on the tips, nothing comes out so they do not shed. There's nothing more annoying than having to pick paint brush bristles out of your artwork. Whenever you hold the brushes in your hand, whether you're holding the large or the small, they just fit very comfortably and naturally in your hands. Now for the project I have in mind for them, I go ahead and picked size number nine and these are made for more water-based products, but the task I have to do today is add some gilding wax to the tables. The decoupage paper has some brown in it, so I thought bronze just seemed like the natural or best color to use in the Dixie Belle gilding wax. You can see that the brush does a good job applying the gilding wax and 
on the tips, I was able to get a very straight, smooth line. So I got the gilding wax only where I wanted it and not in places that I didn't. I will be using these brushes again in a video coming up soon with some water-based product, but my first thought is that I really like them. They're great quality and they perform well. These are fantastic brushes. If you need some artistic brushes for your workshop, I definitely recommend these. I have the product linked down below in the description and make sure you use that code so you can get yourself a little bit of a discount and it lets them know that I sent you to them. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that when I start using the gilding wax, I kind of can't stop. So I kind of went a little crazy with it again, like I normally do. And I apply gilling wax to the edge of the top of the tables, a little bit around the legs. I added it to the one handle because there's only one table that actually has a drawer. And then I went and used my finger and applied a light amount of the gilding wax on top of the raised stencil area. This piece is very moody, very textured, and Applying the gilding wax in this area with my finger just kind of continued that uneven. So it's kind of perfectly imperfect. The decoupage paper and the colors definitely make this piece moody, but the Dixie Bell gilding wax and that bronze color, it just kind of adds some highlight and glam to the piece. Now you can still see a little bit of that decoupage paper line. So I decide to hide that blend it even more by adding some word stencil to the top. Now you can see that the stencil isn't large enough to fill the entire tabletop. So I just move the stencil around until I'm able to fill all the areas that I want to with the French lettering. I get a lot of people who ask me about the gilding wax, if it needs to be protected, will it come off? So whenever gilding wax hardens and cures, it becomes kind of a top coat in its own way. So you do not have to add an extra layer on top of the gilding wax to protect it. I do feel like previously the tops were kind of missing something and this French lettering just brought it all together and pretty much completed the look. To cover up these gross stains in the bottom of the drawer, I use some peel and stick wallpaper that I keep in my workshop. This is a black and gold damask pattern. I put everything back together after that, let it set overnight, and then the only thing left to do in the morning is to buff that gilding wax. Here's a reminder of the heavily used end tables that I started with that had that dog chewed up corner. And then what they look like now. The bronze gilding wax with the decoupage paper and the custom created paint design just made this piece all come together and create another moody beauty. 
Special thank you to Dixie Belle for sending me these products so I could create this look. I just see these tables going into a ladies lounge. You know, men have their men cave and if we want to have like a reading lounge, it's, it's a ladies lounge. <laughs> I know moody beauties aren't for everyone, but I really enjoyed the artistic journey I went on creating this look. That is all I have for you guys today. Until next time.